Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mythic for Operators. Today, we're going to be talking about payload types and C2 profiles. You can see here from our main welcome page that we have no agents or C2 profiles installed. Similarly, you can click up here to the little headphone icon and see we have nothing available. So let's remedy that. Let's install something. We'll switch out from our, our user interface and go over to where we have Mythic installed. In this case, it's installed in Kali Linux. For here, you can use Mythic CLI to install agents and C2 profiles. So we'll go ahead and install the Poseidon agent. To do that, you can run Mythic CLI. We'll do install, and then where you want to install from. You can either install from an already cloned repo by specifying folder, or you can point to a GitHub or Git-based repository. So this could be Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLab, anything that's just Git-based. So we'll do GitHub and then the URL of where you want to pull it from. Now, if you have a specific branch that you want to pull from, you can specify TACB and then the branch name. And if you want to force install, maybe you have the agent installed, the developer made an update and you want to update your installation, you can use TACF to force install that. So we'll go ahead and install. What happens is that repository is cloned down into a temp repository. Mythic CLI goes through to pull out all the various information, put it inside of the Mythic installed services folder. It will add in documentation and everything like that that's part of the repository itself. Then we'll go ahead and build the container and kind of get everything up and going. At this point, you can see that the installed services Poseidon is up for three seconds. If we swap back to our UI, we can see that now we do have Poseidon and the bundled Poseidon TCP C2 profile installed with it. Now let's say we wanna install a C2 profile. So if we go back to Kali, we can install a C2 profile in just the same way. So we'll do mythic CLI install GitHub. Now, Mythic has a bunch of C2 profiles available, not at Mythic agents, but at Mythic C2 profiles. So we'll install the HTTP profile, hit enter, it gets cloned down. If you have one that was already there, you can, you'll can you be prompted to overwrite it. You can automatically get through all those prompts with the TAC F flag. So you can see here, we're going through, we're building the container, some of these containers have embedded binaries that are being built. So we can see that's what's happening right here as you go through in Go to pull down all the different dependencies, make them. All C2 profiles have, if they're an egress profile, have a separate server component that gets executed whenever you start the C2 profile. And that does a lot of the kind of management that's available for accepting connections, opening sockets, like all that sort of stuff. And so we can see here, after we finish all of that, now we have HTTP that is also running. If we swap back to our UI, we can see that now we have HTTP as an additional service that's executing. This icon here will indicate whether or not this is an egress C2 profile or whether it is a peer-to-peer -peer profile. The little Wi-Fi icon for HTTP means that it will reach out over the internet back to the Mythic server. This chain link icon indicates that this is used between two agents locally, not reaching out directly to Mythic. So this is kind of an overview of how to go ahead and install various agents or C2 profiles in Mythic, what it kind of looks like for the agents that you do have installed. You can click the little docs icon and that will open you up into that agent's documentation. This is all local on a separate container local to Mythic. So this isn't reaching out into the public internet to fetch this information. And you can see offset consideration, commands, all sorts of information available for you. Uh, if you click the build info, then you'll see information about the build parameters that are used for the agent. These, whenever we go through in a future video to build an agent, these will be the various options that we can toggle back and forth and manipulate to help craft a payload just for us. If you're trying to script out building payloads and interacting with Mythic, this is also where you'll find the names of the fields you need to specify for build parameters and C2 profiles and stuff like that. So very handy reference here. If you want to delete a payload type or a C2 profile, you can click this little delete button. Now, just like with the operations, 
if you delete a payload type or a C2 profile, it doesn't delete, delete that data from the database. Instead, it simply marks it as deleted and removes it from a lot of options in the UI. These sorts of things aren't fully deleted because if they are fully deleted from the database, then you lose that sort of tracking that Mythic does behind the scenes with its uh, database schema. So we can see here, if we actually click delete for Poseidon, it just goes away from our view and we can automatically see that now the supported agents that was listed here for Poseidon is no longer the case. If we want to bring that data back, you can do one of two things. This little toggle icon will allow you to show and hide deleted agents in C2 profiles. We can simply click restore and say, you know what, that wasn't supposed to be deleted, bring it back. And you can automatically see right here that our association is good again. Alternatively, if you delete this and the payload type or C2 profile container resyncs with Mythic, that data will come back into the UI for you. So a lot of different ways you can bring it back if you want to. Just like with the payload type for C2 profiles, if you click docs, you'll be brought to the overview page for that C2 profile. Again, this is all local. So you can see mermaid diagrams of traffic flow and configuration options and settings and all sorts of stuff available to you there. You can see again, similar to the payload type, this build info to see what kinds of parameters are you able to specify for this C2 profile. In this case for HTTP, we have generic things like callback port, kill date, headers that you wanna set, uh, if you wanna do encryption, all sorts of stuff kind of available for you there. We can also click to stop or start the profile that's running internally into that uh, container that we installed. You can also view or edit the configuration if you want to change maybe what port it's listening on, if you want it to use SSL or various options that are available to that C2 profile. There is an option to save instances. So with this, you can provide a name for a pre-specified set of configuration parameters. Once you do that, that'll be available for you whenever you build your payload to be able to say, I don't wanna retype all these values every time, I want to just pre-use everything that was set up when I created this thing here before. So really handy way if you're going to be creating lots of payloads of the same type and you don't wanna potentially mistype things like a domain name every time. The last thing here is this manage files button. So C2 profiles often have extra files that they might need. For example, SSL certificates, configuration, uh, keys, stuff like that. You can use this manage files button to go ahead and see all the different files that are associated with that C2 profile. And then of course you can delete them, download them, edit them in here. You can upload new files. All of these things go through to communicate via RabbitMQ back to that container to then store them inside of that container locally. So this is an overview of the various payload types and C2 profiles. We'll dive more into how these things work and configuration options and all this sort of stuff whenever we go into building payloads in a little bit. But for now, it's a high level overview of how everything kind of works and what these various components are.